Welcome to Her Remarkable History. Remember, to support our channel, please subscribe. Elizabeth I's incredible war cry to defeat the Spanish Armada. Throughout the reign of Elizabeth I, she faced many different threats to her leadership and throne. She survived all of these, including many plots to assassinate her and replace her as queen with the Catholic Mary Queen of Scots. It was a dangerous time for Elizabeth, especially in the wake of the religious turmoil Tudor England had been plunged into. When Henry VIII split from the Catholic Church, he began the English Reformation and England became Protestant. With this continuing under Edward VI's reign, Mary I, Elizabeth's sister, restored Catholicism, but Elizabeth being Protestant reverted the religion of the nation yet again. This caused a huge amount of controversy, and one of the biggest fears since Henry's reign was an invasion to England made up of Catholics, even possibly backed up by the Pope and the Papacy. This would arrive in July of 1588 in the form of the Spanish Armada, the greatest collection of naval warships that the world had ever seen. The plan was for the Armada to defeat the Royal Navy and overthrow Elizabeth I and her Protestant rule of England, and therefore restore Catholicism. The Armada was the most feared invasion force the world had ever seen. But Elizabeth had to do something to inspire her soldiers to see off the threat. The Armada was defeated, but one of the most significant moments in the conflict was when Elizabeth addressed her land forces at Tilbury in Essex, unleashing a rallying war cry and stirring them to do battle, and to defeat the Armada. Before the speech took place on the 9th of August 1588, the Spanish Armada had been forced out of the Strait of Dover following the Battle of Gravelines. This had took place almost ten days before, and the English exploited the weakness of the Armada. Francis Drake learnt that the Spanish heavy guns took a long while to be loaded, and that this could not be done easily. The Spanish gunners would then fire once, and then tried to board the enemy ships. This meant that the English fleet managed to take advantage. They provoked the Spanish to fire first from their heavy guns and then stay out of range. The English then closed in and managed to damage the enemy ships using broadsides, and during the battle, many of the Spanish gunners were injured or killed. The ships at points were so close that they began to exchange musket fire and five Spanish ships had been lost. Many other Spanish ships were damaged badly, but the worry was still that there was an invasion force that would land on English soil. Because of the threat of invasion from the Netherlands, the Earl of Leicester, Robert Dudley, had amassed a force of around 4,500 soldiers at West Tilbury in Essex. Their purpose was to defend the Thames estuary and to take out any enemy ships that found themselves trying to pass up the river towards London. The result of the Battle of Gravelines had not yet reached England and Elizabeth went to inspect the soldiers and what happened that day, and it's gone down in history as one of the great rallying messages from a monarch. And it cemented Elizabeth's legacy as a warrior queen, and a queen who could also inspire her armed forces. Now Elizabeth arrived in Tilbury and left her bodyguard detachment before Tilbury Fort and then she went on amongst the people and her subjects, with an escort of six men. Ahead of her walked Lord Ormond, with the sword of state in his hand, and he was followed by a page leading the Queen's charger, and another who carried the Queen's silver helmet on a cushion. Then Elizabeth came, dressed in white with a silver circus, indicating she was also willing to fight, a strong image to the people there that day. She was mounted on a grey gelding horse, and was flanked by Robert Dudley, the Earl of Leicester, on her right, and Robert Devereux, the Earl of Essex, on her left, with Sir John Norreys behind her. It would have been a spectacular sight. Different historians have described the image in a number of different ways. For example, it was said, Elizabeth rode through their ranks on a huge white war horse, armed like a queen out of an antique mythology, in a silver circus and silver truncheon. Her gown was white velvet, 
and there was plumes in her hair like those that waved from the helmets of mounted soldiers. Another said a steel corselet was found for her to wear, and a helmet with white plumes given to a page to carry. Bareheaded, the queen mounted the white horse. The Earl of Ormode carried the sword of state before her. Lester walked at the horse's bridle, and the page with the helmet came behind. In front of the soldiers, she then gave her address. Different accounts of this do exist, but they all carry the same message a rallying cry to her soldiers to see off the threat from the Spanish Armada once and for all. The most authentic version was found in a letter from Lionel Sharp to the Duke of Buckingham, who had been attached to the Earl of Leicester's regiment based at Tilbury. He wrote how the Queen rode through all the squadrons of her army as army Athena, attended to by noble footmen Leicester, Essex and Norris, she made an excellent oration to her army, which the next day after her departure I was commanded to re-deliver all the army together to keep a public fast. Her speech, according to Sharp, stated, My loving people, we have been persuaded by some that are careful to our safety to take heed how we commit ourselves to armed multitudes for fear of treachery but I assure you I do not desire to live to distrust my faithful and loving people. Let tyrants fear, I have always so behaved myself that, under God, I have placed my chiefest strength and safeguard in the loyal hearts and good will of my subjects, and therefore I am come amongst you, as you see, at this time, not for my recreation and disport, but being resolved in the mist and heart of the battle, to live and die amongst you all, to lay down for my God and for my kingdom and my people, my honour, my blood, even in the dust. I know I have the body but of a weak, feeble woman, but I have the heart and stomach of a king, and a king of England too and think foul scorn that Parma or Spain or any prince of Europe should dare to invade the borders of my realm, to which rather than any dishonour shall grow by me. I myself will take up arms, I myself will be your general judge and rewarder of every one of your virtues in the field. I know already, for your forwardness you have deserved rewards and crowns, and we do assure you, on a word of a prince, they shall be duly paid. In the meantime, my lieutenant-general shall be in my stead, than whom never prince commanded a more noble or worthy subject, not doubting but by your obedience to my general, by your concord in the camp, and your valour in the field we shall shortly have a famous victory over these enemies of my God, of my kingdom, and of my people. The authenticity of this speech has been accepted, and there is little doubt that Sharp's version is a copy, and many leading Tudor historians consider it to have been genuine. The appearance in person of the Queen at Tilbury was incredibly significant. Most of the men there have never seen their Queen, only maybe in passing or in an image. However, she portrayed a godlike image, like Polis Athena, the Greek goddess of war, who sought to smash her enemies. Athena is often portrayed with helmet and armour, like Elizabeth was, and the sight of her in all white would have been an incredibly powerful one, armed with her weapon. Her subjects would have known of Athena, and this symbolism was conveyed to the crowd. The most famous line of her speech has to be, I have the body of a weak and feeble woman, but I have the heart and stomach of a king, and a king of England too, indicating that despite her gender, she was too the king and queen of England, as it was feared at the time that a woman could not lead her country in battle against the Spanish, it's considered also that Elizabeth, who was a skilled writer, who penned most of her speeches, was the one who wrote every line, showing that she knew what was needed. Over time, other versions have emerged of the Tilbury speech. However, the first account 
outlined is accepted to have been the most historically accurate. Another version emerged in 1612 which said, Come on now, my companions at arms and fellow soldiers in the field, now for the Lord, for your Queen and for the Kingdom. For what are these proud Philistines, that they should revile the host of the living God? I have been your Prince in peace, so will I be in war, neither will I bid you go and fight, but come and let us fight the battle of Lord. The enemy, perhaps, may challenge my sex for that I am a woman. So may I likewise charge their mould for that they are but men whose breath is in their nostrils, and if God do not charge England with the sins of England, little do I fear their force. If God is with us, who can be against us? However, this isn't considered as historically accurate as the accepted version. The image of Elizabeth I riding her horse with the symbolism of the warrior queen that day in Tilbury has gone down in history for being a remarkable moment in the life of the Tudor Queen. Eventually, the Spanish Armada was defeated and it was forced to return to Spain, despite a large amount of ships sinking, landing on Scotland and Ireland and being attacked, with the wind and weather playing an incredibly important part in its defeat. Only 67 ships and less than 10,000 men survived, with around 5,000 dying by slaughter by local inhabitants, with many also drowning, starving and dying from disease. The speech solidified Elizabeth's reputation as a warrior queen who was adept in rallying her soldiers and the defeat of the Armada also reinforced to many that she was the strong and defiant monarch that the country needed. She dispelled any doubts, and her speech was incredibly brave, hugely impactful, and significantly contributed to the positive legacy of Elizabeth I. Thank you for watching, and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.